Yo, what is up, guys? This video is sponsored by Portofessor. Portofessor is a very useful League of Legends app, and I am very excited to have the privilege to be working together, as this has been the only app that I've used consistently throughout my years of playing League of Legends. There are many features on Portofessor for both in-game and out-of-game performance, which makes this app the perfect one to start improving it your gameplay. Some of the features that I like the most is the information that you get whilst loading into the game. As you can see in this game example, I am pretty new at playing mid lane, but Portofessor guides me to a good build path and the correct skill order for my champion. In this game, you can see that I'm considered out of field as I have mainly played top lane, and that enemy top laner is actually an age of one trick playing Darius. Portofessor will always give you personalized information on players, so you can even see when somebody is playing on tilt because of a loss streak, or for example, a player that likes to invade a lot. So you can predict player behavior, which is extremely useful. Portofessor is free and easy to use and will help you towards your goals of improving at League of Legends. Make sure to check out the link in the description or comments to start using Portofessor, and thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Every move you made, I was watching you. And we're gonna try and get towards these last two picks. I'll explain why. You see here how we are first pick? That means we are blue side. Whenever you are blue side, you cannot get the final last pick, but I want to try and get as late as possible in my pick because Mundo is a very bad champion to blind pick. That is one of the biggest downsides. If I were to ban a champion, it would be Aurelia. Why do I ban Aurelia? Because she has very easy access to percentage health damage in Blade Rune King. Other options could be Aatrox, anything with percentage health damage and they can jump on top of you is pretty much hard to deal with. These guys don't want to swap, so that blows for me. Uh, I'm gonna try it again with the mid laner. Maybe he wants to swap. Again, my goal would be to try and pick as late in the draft as possible, so they can build percentage of damage everywhere. I'm gonna try and swap. Gwen is a good ban. Gwen is a really good ban. Fiora is a good ban. Vayne is pretty good. Ultimately, these matchups are still playable though. Preferably, I don't blind pick Mundo. I always want to try and pick Mundo as late as possible. Professor Akali said you're the best low player he ever saw. Swear on my mother's life, I am not lying. At Alois now. Really? There we go. So we get to see at least four of their champions before we pick. I would just advise this for any top laner, right? But especially when you pick Mundo. We are gonna go for this room page. We go Grass of the Undying. Very standard. We go Demolish because we are only building HP. We go Conditioning to get resistances. And then we go Overgrave to gain permanent maximum health. We go for Magical Footwear and Approach Velocity because every time we land a Cleaver, we get movement speed towards our opponents. And then we go Attack Speed, Double Scaling Health. All of this is centered around gaining as much health and resistance as possible. And as you guys can clearly see, this is a full scaling setup. And this also ties in with how you want to play Mundo in general. You don't want to play Mundo aggressive ever. You are amongst the weakest early game top lane champions. You're on par with a Nasus in terms of weakness. My goal playing Mundo is to farm even. Follow the steps, okay? I do this whenever I'm playing in Challenger as well. I scout the early game 2v2 and I scout the matchup. Gangplank is not the strongest early game champion. In terms of setup, he's going Fleet Resolve, so not that oppressive. And he's playing Flash Teleport, right? Not Ignite, not playing something like First Strike Domination, which would be a bit more you know, oppressive, or maybe playing the grass setup. He's playing with a scaling setup. I have a scaling setup too. That's good, because it's gonna mean that he doesn't have that much kill pressure going into the early game. And then for jungler, they have an echo jungler. I'd much rather play against an echo jungler than like an Elise, a Rek'Sai, a Xin Zhao, Elise Sin, something that can gank me in the early game, right? Echo is not that scary. He wants to mainly farm. Same for Massey. So in terms Anybody of the early game 2v2, not much should happen around the top side. So right now, I've checked the jungle 2v2. I've checked his setup. I don't know a starting item. If he goes D-Shoot or D-Blade or Longsword refillable, that will change how he's going to play, right? I walk into here because I see three people bot and I want to look for an early game ward so I know how the Echo is going to be pathing in the general sense. We have a ward here too. Echo got a first bot. That blows. I also show here as well. Okay. And now I can start either Q or E. If I select E, I gain 15 attack damage, as you can see right here. Plus, I get the opportunity to push. This is a matchup where we can both contest priority because neither of us are super strong in the early game. Okay, I'm going to go with my E start here. Okay, he has the barrel set up. He's playing with a D-Blade. So you see here he's playing relatively aggressive. That's okay. The reason I went for E start is so that I can E away the wave right here and look for priority. Space around this barrel. And remember guys, I'm not looking for solo kills. I'm not looking for many trades. I'm looking to go even in CS. Even in CS is winning. And I just push the wave like that. Whenever you last hit me with your E, you full AOE everything. Now we're level two first. So even though we're a weak early game champion, I'm able to contest the wave. And you see here, I'm not really trading that many autos. I'm just having full priority on the wave here. He's playing with the D-Blade, so that's relatively aggressive. 
Beautiful. If I can get brass, gas box, I would, of course, want to look for it. And now I'm going to continuously try and push this in. So I perpetually have my level of timers faster than him. He's farmed 11 out of 12 there. So this guy's playing pretty well. The only thing is I've been focusing on means. I haven't auto him once. But because he's been focusing on me, he's lost quite a lot of HP for that. You see, all I'm trying to do is focusing on the wave. Why? I don't need to kill my opponent. I just got to make sure that I'm not vulnerable to getting ganked. Echo is likely to be pathing into top lane here because I had a ward on rep off and he did not show there. So right now, I am fine with this wave bouncing back into me so that I'm not vulnerable to any early game ganks by the Echo right here. He's farmed very well, this gangplank, but he's running out of mana. Oh, yeah, yeah. I tried to get the, pass, uh, the barrel there. I'm a bit scared of his barrel. There we go. Space out of it. We got a one grass work there because he uses passive on the minion. Now, another thing about Mundo is you want to put two, three points in Q and then start maxing E. So in the early game, you actually put your points into your Q so you can have more pressure with your Qs. And then we start putting points into our E afterwards. Uh, Massey is invading and Echo hasn't shown. So I'm not sure where the Echo's at right now. I'm going to match my potion here so I can contest this bounce that he's trying to put in. My attack was faster. He's running out of mana. Use his passive there. I might be able to get his flash. Okay, that's all good. There's Echo. He has two kills and a full item. That's why he's one-shotting me almost. But he has his full item. So it is our job to run the hell away. Oh, we got the kill here from the Massey. That's amazing. And I can just recall here because this wave is pushing into me slowly. And so the best play for me here would be to reset TP back. We're gonna rush Warmox. We get our giant spell. 350 HP gives me a little bit of AD as well. I got 7 AD. Hey, what the f are you... What are you doing? That wave was much bigger. You criminal. Oh good, we forgive him. Okay, so here, Gangplank should TP. Why? Because the wave is pushing towards me. So whilst the wave is pushing away from it, it would be much more beneficial for Gangplank to teleport because he's permanently losing out on resources. He's bought Longsword and Glowing Mode. He does not have his Sheen, so that is massive. Three points in Q, remember, then Emax. Barrel by him. I could have W'd that to basically block most of the damage he, has no good coaches. he still has teleport so i have to keep that in mind what i'm thinking about during my laning phase is still how do i set up my next reset that's all i'm thinking about if your mindset is centered around reset timers you're always going to be in a consistent position because you're setting them up in advance so i'm going to pop my potion here on the next wave i will hit level six and that level six is going to be a bridge for me to set up this next reset because gameplay is still kind of trading me right he's playing very well to be fair in terms of mechanics this guy is definitely smurf as well he doesn't have a silver movement and the play style so i'm gonna just try and utilize my level six here as a bridge to get this wave to crash okay i thought maybe dodge is left but he just walked into the straight line uh, i'm gonna slow push this why to allow this wave to walk in there as well and then i set up my reset now on this wave i hard push as fast as possible i missed my e i have to ult here else i'm dead that's okay like i said the level six here functions as a bridge for me to get my reset in and now we base and gonna be walking back you generally speaking always want to set up your reset after crashing the wave into your opponent's turret because then the wave is gonna bounce back into you you're not forced to walk up full assets you're not really losing anything so that's the timer where you always want to set up your resets okay 1.4k gold and we will basically be untouchable uh gameplay still has tp so i assume he's recalling tp in back we're 10 cs up that's really good their echo is their main win condition so uh that sucks because he's their only ap and he's getting this fat so i might need to just build magic because it's only for him, but we'll see. So here, I want to play a little bit of trade avoidant because I don't have my ultimate for one minute. And the wave is slow pushing towards me right now. My journey is mid. I have no idea where Echo is at. And if I trade, trade too much here, trade too much HP, it's going to be really hard for me to play out the bounce. And I need to be able to play out the bounce if I want to crash the wave into his turret to set up my reset, right? So here, I'm playing a little bit more trade avoidant. I don't want to play that aggressive. I'm just playing slowly so that I can always play a potential bounce opportunity here. I'm gonna hit level 7 here, so I can trade. Especially when I land my... He did double passive onto me. I don't have ult, so back off. My Massey said he was looking to come, but he's doing grubs and set. That's okay. I was able to trade there because I had landed 3 Qs in a row. Now the gameplay is very likely to be looking for his own reset, so I'm thinking about setting up my own reset as well. I have my ult coming up in 17. And what do I do first when looking to set up my reset? I check on my minimap where next wave is at. I see it's coming. I hard push this wave and then I'll probably instantly reset. Unless I can snatch a plate because I do have demolish and grubs now. I think I can greet for one plate. My wave will walk with me here. Echoes both sides so I can go here. This is a cannon wave so I can't look for that. 
I think I'm just in time if I reset here instantly. Alternatively, I can greet to stay with the intention of getting 1.4k gold and then getting Warmogs instantly, which I don't mind because I have ultimate and he does not. So he doesn't have that much kill pressure onto me. So here I will switch my plan to stay. I get level 8, he just hit level 7. So that gives me some security too. Reminder to put points into your E after the 3 points into Q. I got the cannon. And like I said, I have my ult, so we're still completely fine. We don't get my warm quite yet, but we're still in a completely fine position. So we got the reset in here regardless. I've used my ult to secure the reset, right? I'm not gonna buy anything else here because I just want to get my warm ACP. I'll just buy a uh, pink ward. And we're ahead in CS right now, so reminder. The mentality that I have, guys, if you are ahead in CS, you are hard winning. Even though it doesn't look like it right now, I don't look that strong. I'm going to be extremely strong this game because I'm one of the best scaling champions. I mean that. I am one of the best scaling champions in the game. Always last at me is with your E, so AU is through, right? So here, I'm waiting to set up this minion with my E, so it goes all the way through. I land it on him as well. Wow, I killed it, but I didn't push it through. That's strange. Okay, now we have Warmox. We have enough bonus health, 1.3k, so we can always keep it. I'm gonna go for Sweeper now to deny him vision. And now my chant plan changes. I can take as many trades as I want permanently and then just walk out and I'll heal back to full. Look at my AD as well. I just put an extra point in my E. I have 160 AD whilst I just have a Warmox, right? So now him taking any trade just bites him in the, in the foot. Because now I'm just gonna be permanently healing with my Warmox. Oh, Echo's here. That should be okay though. I'm gonna W here on the impact. I, I wait to be low HP with ulting. Remember, your ultimate heals you depending on how low HP you are. So I get insta healing there. That's one kill. And it is going to be number two. I'm completely fine with you getting the kills. As long as he doesn't take my wave. Because we can snatch up some plates here. And uh, look at my warmings, guys. Look at the value. I am back to full HP. What are you thinking? I'm not sure if he has TP or not. But from this point onwards, I know the game is absolutely over. Nothing the gameplay can really do anymore. Because he's already behind against the Mundo. And if you're behind against the Mundo, he will outskill you. Look at my AD here. I put last point in E. 180 AD. Just for comparison, right? My Blade Rune King... Okay, let's... I mean, my teammates don't have a lot of AD either. If we get six drops as well, I would say the game is disgustingly over. He is kind of having a scaling setup going for the call, right? That's all good. He wants to scale as well. He's just not going to outskill me. We get the conditioning there. We almost one shot to wave now. We need a bit more HP. Oh. We might be dead here. I'm not sure if I can sustain this. I also don't have my W. Help me, big boys! Okay, just running out is fine for me. I can try and heal back to full with uh, my warm. Oh shit. I missed. But I'm healing now with Warmox. Look at that. Oh shit. I, I really wanted to make that range. That's so good though. Now we go for Heart Steel. I'll go for Boots of Swiftness. Slows here, slows here. Uh, sl yeah, they all have slow, so I think Boots of Swiftness is completely fine. And now we go for Heart Steel. Again, look at, my, look at my AD, right? Every time I build HP, pretty chill. 200 AD. Whilst I'm. 3.5k HP, not too shabby. I should be able to start one-shotting means now. I think I've one-shot this whole backline. There we go. And I've only built HP. I have infinite mana and infinite HP with Warmox. My damage is still crazy, as you guys see. See? Well, we trade some HP, so... Uh, we go out of combat and just uh, go back to full HP. He's gonna have a rude awakening when he sees me going back to full HP right here. Yeah, what's up, bro? What do you want to do? Warwick's Mundo, baby. The only counterplay, or the biggest counterplay to Mundo, is having percentage health damage. You don't got that. Nobody really has that. Um, and they're not seeming to go Blade Run King as well. I'll be unkillable. <laughs> How chose this gameplay, guys? You know what the best part is about Mundo as well? He is extremely easy to play. If you play five games of Mundo, you'll understand how to play the champion. All you need to do is learn to play trade avoidant, play good with your fundamentals, aka your reset timers. That's the most thing on uh, most important thing on Mundo. I explained that perfectly. My bullet and dying is actually good for me, because now I can teleport here with the hard steel, and then also access to this tier 1, and then the tier 2 later on. Stop. Shut up. I'm sorry. You could you could go top and collect this, or you can just bolt and farm here with me. I don't mind it, bro. You do you. My passive made sure I don't get CC'd. All you, Lux. All you, buddy. If she wants to play for this, I'll play for this. I have a wave here as well. What's my damage now, by the way? Yeah, it's very nice damage, right? With the hearts too. Uh, okay, we died in bot lane, so I can go bot lane now. 
I like it. I don't mind the outcome. She's two full items. Look at her AD, 243. We have same AD, but she has built Collector Infinity Edge, and I have built Warbox Heart Steel. Did she really AFK from that? What? How's that on me? Did Lux really AFK from that? I just took... The Dude, it was correct for me to be bought. No way, she actually goes AFK, right? Okay. She was making a statement, though. It's like a petty statement. She, She's like, oh... It's fine, we're gonna wait to heal with the Warmox here. I don't think they have kill pressure on to me. I mean... I have ult and W. I mean, some Arceus stacks, though. He's gonna ult back. Yeah, oh no. Well, guys, and in the meantime, we're healing back with our Warmox as such. Very chill game, but right? I'm just farming, taking my turrets, and it's slowly expanding my lead. We can get a Blood Mill soon. I believe Blood Mill is fine here. Alternative option could be Randuans. We could go for Titanic Hydra, not bad either. But I think Blood Mill would just give me. Look, I already have 2.7k bonus health, and Blood Mill as a passive grants you 2% of your bonus health as a tech damage, so similar with my E. So from almost having 3k extra uh, HP, I will get 60 AD just on the passive alone. Every heart suit stack gives me some AD as well, so I always want to try and get my heart suit stacks. Look at that. I get 2 AD from poking heart steel there. Very chill because I get extra HP. All right, we have the thing now. How much AD do you guys think I'll have from just buying this item? It only grants me 40 AD. Yeah, pretty sure, right? We could consider going for Randall's Omen because they're full AD with the exception of... Mr. Echo. And uh, other than that, there's not much to play for on the map because we got in top tier 2, we got in bot tier 2. Mid tier 2 is still up. We could potentially play for this bot tier 3, but the next neutral objective that we're realistically going to be playing for is going to be Baron. That guy's dead. And this guy gets one shot too by me. Wait, what? That's an. Uh, that was my Ash. That just came from top lane. I mean, double slow sucks. But that guy's dead. I'm healing here with my. Thing. Just one shot in that Zaya real quick, like it's nothing. I'm gonna eat a minion to kill her too. And uh, let's go back to full HP with a wrap off and warm healing. Let's see how long it lasts. Full scaling tank that scales infinitely, 400 something AD. Uh, I have infinite healing. My Kalista, right, and Master He combined have less AD than I do. That's pretty chill. This guy will not do damage to me. That's my damage. What do you think of the trait? What do you guys think of that trait? Reminder. I'm just gonna go heal back to full HP in a second after I'm out of combat with my Warmox. And I one shot turrets because of Demolish. The more HP you have, the more damage you do to turrets. All in all, setup feels pretty disgusting, eh? Oh, you think you're out, eh? Come here, piggy. Where are you? Oh, I hit a rep off! No, I actually hit a rep off. I'm an idiot. Wait, you guys don't want this fight, by the way. Zaya's from top. I need my ult. I need my ult. I gotta play it slow until I have ult. I can kill them all though. With ult. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Healing juice. Activate it. Guys, we have a problem. No, we don't. I am a problem. Alright. And we can do Baron. In the meantime... Okay. After 11 years of playing Riven, I'm actually considered to become Mundo OTP after seeing this. I wouldn't recommend you to instantly become a Mundo OTP, but I would highly recommend you at least give Mundo a try, right? There's a reason he has such a high win rate consistently, especially in the lower ranks. And like I said, he is very easy to learn. With this, I will genuinely one-shot anybody, by the way. I have 500 AD, by the way. I <laughs> I have 500 AD. This guy has 240 and my Kalista is 219. I have more than my Kalista and Master combined. And they're not, they're not weak, right? Keep in mind, I have uh, 6k HP as well. I one-shot everything. Everything is one-shot right now. Let's showcase how much of a problem I am, okay? Let's showcase it. Watch this, Zaya. What, Zaya? What man? What, 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 what? And now let's end the game. We're gonna one shot the Nexus turret very wholesome like. Give me a second here. I genuinely think I can one shot it here with this minion. I still have ult, keep in mind.
Am I a problem? Yes, I am. So you can do E, alt, you can do auto attack E, Titanic Hydra, and uh, we refer to that as Machine Gun Mundo. And you one shot somebody. I pretty much had zero solo kills in the lane, but I told you I will outskill and become a problem. This guy's dead, watch this. Auto E, Titanic Hydra, Machine Gun Mundo. Did you see it? Auto E, Titanic Hydra, one shot. My favorite combo. Mundo. Dr. Mundo. Dr. Mundo. I'm gonna be joining a tournament together with other streamers and it's gonna start on 2nd of July, so next week we're gonna start a tournament and, um, and so I'll be playing top lane for the remainder of that tournament. Once that tournament is over, uh, I want to do a subathon for the first time and one of the goals I'll set is I'm gonna play another role for a full month and that is going to be either AD carry or mid lane. So uh, I want to do either of those roles depending on who gets vote the most votes will do. Okay guys, so take a look at enemy team. They don't have percentage health damage in this champion. Kaisa has it, Lux doesn't have it, Nafiri I believe doesn't have it. I think this is a Nafiri top and Malzar. I will fool. Full out skill enemy team. My mindset is the same as every other game, okay? Nafiri isn't a very strong early game champion, so we can use that to our advantage. It's not like a set, right? And they have a Talia, also not the strongest early game jungler. But my mindset is the same. Listen closely, okay? Going slightly behind in CS is expected. Going even is winning. Going ahead is pretty much snowballing. That is just farm. I am not looking for solo kills. I'm looking to high prioritize farming well and playing fundamentally correct so I cannot get ganked. The first step to, you know, getting making sure I cannot die to early game ganks is by making sure I know where enemy jungle is starting. They have a Talia, we have a Morgana. Neither jungler is very impressive in early game ganks. And additionally, I want to... And, and Nafiri also isn't that strong in the early game, right? So I would say 9 out of 10 times, you're gonna get pushed in as a Mundo. But this game... What I could opt for or could try to do is go E start and, come and and basically match the wave a little bit more. You see right now I have 61 AD, but if I skill E, I get 15 attack damage. And also if I last it a minion with E, I get uh, AOE damage, right? So that could help me in trying to get priority. So yeah, my goal would be to try and get priority here if I can. But if I can't get it, I'm completely fine. I don't want to trade. I want to play for CS, okay? I am CS focused. Morgana's pathing top, Talia's pathing top. So if I look for priority, I want to do an early game crash. He doesn't look to play playing aggressive, so I go E here. You see here, 76 AD now, and so I can actually just push this wave. Gonna dodge the Q2. Beautiful. And I don't want to trade much. I just want to try and see if I can push in this wave. Getting the EE away here onto him and the other minion. Get this bitch off me. And I would only go E start if you can somewhat contest in the early game, right? I've hit him with all the EOE thus far. That's all good. We've been farming well. All right, that's gonna require some practice to multitask that. Of course, I've been doing that for a lot longer. Dodging his Qs in the meantime. Now he's dropped below HP. He's used his potion already. And I've gotten the priority right now. One thing I gotta be careful for, though, is that Talia's pathing top, similar to Morgana. So for me, it's safe to assume that Talia is at the same position where... That's why we don't trade in the early game. Okay, I actually want this wave to push back into me right now. Because one more trade like that, and I am dead. So I'm completely fine with him hitting the wave. And pushing this wave back into me. Because I else I can die. Wow, he predicted me well. He was pushing back into me, so I'm not forced to walk up for last hits. Greedy! No! Okay, we're gonna recall now. Stop fighting, Alois! I shouldn't have looked for priority. That was greedy. I almost died. We can base TP to get a free out of jail card once. But now we don't have the best reset. We don't have uh, any additional potions to help us. But it's okay. Good last hitting, though. Remember, three points into Q, then max E. I'm gonna slow push here to deny him as much EXP as I can. Also, the next mentality that I have right now, Adam, think of the Prime. What I'm thinking about right now is how do I set up my next reset, right? That's what I'm permanently thinking about. So, by slow pushing this wave, I allow this next wave to walk close to me as well, where I can farm it in a comfortable position. Both jungles should reset and go back into bot side. You see Morgana's bot side, Talia's gonna do the same. Now, I wanna slow push this wave as well, and then the next wave is the one I want to hard push. This wave is gonna give me my level 5, so I'm gonna be stronger on this wave in general. And then the next wave I want to hard push so I can set up my reset. So you see here, my mindset is permanently centered around how do I set up my next reset. So we slow push this wave. Now the next wave I want to hard push so I can reset. I don't mind losing so much fear, I'm just gonna make sure I don't die. However, if I get the wave to crash and I die, then at least it's a good death. 
We gotta push in this wave. I think we might die. Okay, we got most of the wave in. Now it's time to reset. He could freeze. There's not much I can do about it. But it doesn't look like he's freezing. You can see he set up his own reset again as well, right? So from his perspective, freezing is not that appealing because he said has to set up his own reset again as well. Actually, I'll do this. There we go. I'm not going to be full HP because I can walk back here whilst he's going to push the wave. If I wait till I'm full HP, I might lose additional minions. Right now, we're even in CS. Remember, that means I'm winning. Okay, so right now, this wave is pushing to me. I've lost two melee minions, so I'm going to need two me melee minions, two melee minions on the next wave to get my level 6. But I'm going to use that level 6 as a way to get up my future bounce again. He should get level 6 from this minion very soon because he hasn't lost that much XP. So I'm going to try and hit these minions as much as I can to get my level 6. And then... I'm going to use that level 6 as a bridge to set up my future reset again as well. All good. She gets the wave to crash. I should stop trading. You see, we just do not win trades. She still has teleport, so that's one thing I've got to consider as well. If she's recalling here, I'm going to ha try and hard push this next wave so that I can set up my next reset again as well. So you see here, my mindset, guys, is permanently around how do I set up my next reset. I believe she's recalling, so I'm going to hard push this so I can set up my own reset. If she TPs, she might... Okay, that's really bad because I didn't AOE. And I think my W usage before was pretty bad as well because I can't use it on this right now. I hope she hasn't TP'd so I can reset right now. And then the wave is bouncing back into me. Oh, she has teleported. Okay, I can look for a plant in the river. There should be one here. Oh, the guy is 5 and 0. This is not good. Less than that for plus 20. Okay. What is her healing? So stupid as healing. Nice. Flush ult used. So I'm going to slow push this wave, hard push this wave, set up my next reset again. Permanently thinking about my resets, right? That's what you guys need to start ingraining as well. If you're thinking ahead with your position, you will always be in a good spot. Five minutes. All right. Hard push this wave now. Set up my reset. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to look for a plate. All I want to do is just set up this reset. And then we are going to be outscaling this piggy eventually. So you see here, guys. All I'm doing the whole laning phase is playing my wave states in a manner where I can just set up my resets so that I'm never in a vulnerable position where I can die and then I get to scale for free. That's what you're supposed to do as Mundo. Okay, guys, my whole team is losing, which is a great example to showcase how hard Mundo can carry. Okay. She ulted, right? So I'm going to W instantly here. And heal as much as I can. She's building static, which is good. Because that's magic damage. She doesn't have flush hold right now, so not much kill pressure. It's annoying as champion, man. Okay, that's really, really good. Beautiful. 1.1k gold is all we need. 328, and then we start being stronger again. We've just been farming even the whole laning phase, right? And that is my mentality. And it doesn't look like it right now. I know. But I'm telling you guys, I am winning by farming even. Just give me time to scale. I want to keep this one caster alive here. So his next wave comes close to here so I can hard push it. We're going to have an extra point in our E. This is the wave we hard push to set up our reset. And then we are finally going to be strong. But to be fair, I want to tele teleport to pressure. Maybe I can snatch an extra plate here. You do not want to fight me, buddy. My teammates are top lane too. You see my damage, guys? I can finally start fighting back. This guy has no flush. Beautiful. And uh, look at the Warbucks value. I'm going to slow push this. Why? To allow this wave to walk up so I can use both ways. Look at my Warbucks. You guys see why I got Warbucks, guys? It already works at one item. Ain't that crazy. We're going to get six grubs, which is insane for Mundo. And now we're going to become a monster. And so my, my job right now is to just take equal health traits. I don't mind. She has cleaver. It doesn't matter. Equal health traits is good. And then we just dip after the trade. And I'll be scaling to full HP. So here, she takes half my HP, I take half of his, I walk away, and she's do this for a bit. Alright guys, we're back to full HP, let's go. Who's gonna be my next champion? Set, I wanna do, I really wanna do set, and I want to do a Riven again as well. Maybe. But I've done a lot of Riven content, so Riven might have to wait a little bit. We get our Demolish, or not that, our Conditioning finally. We should have Demolish again though, so we can look to snatch another plate here. In fact, I believe I can just take this whole turret down. There we go, guys. Told you. Going even in farm is winning. We're going to go full tank this game. So we're going to go hard steel. And then we're going to go um, unending despair. And spirit visage to amplify all my healing. And then we're going to be a monstrosity. That's the best answer to that. Okay. Well, guys. So we're doing some window things here. The more HP you have, the more damage my demolish will do. Uh, please don't one-shot me. We almost got the full turret.
beautiful. She lost half her HP, I lost half of mine. What do we do? Walk away, wait for Warmox. These topside camps are up, and I believe Talia also wants to go there because she's already pretty low in CS. I can one-shot the casters. Oh, yeah. We're gonna get this now. Now, fear to TP mid. Dude, what if I just actually get the tier 3 as well? I believe I can. What if I just go full savage? No, oh, I TP here. Why? Because if I can get the kill here, I shot on their win condition. And I also get the tempo into the bot tier 1 here. Because Ashro can just back off. I'm going to ping him to go away and go mid. And I get tempo into the bot tier 1 right now. Right? So this was just a matter of tempo I'm understanding here. Because if their bot lane dies, I can get tempo into this bot tier 1. And I've gotten top tier 1 and tier 2 anyways. So this is completely fine. I mean, I probably would have had this if I stayed. But I still think it's better to play for this. If this guy walks forward, he's dead. He just doesn't know it yet. What? Hey, I call bullshit from that one. Kaisa has two and a half items, so I gotta be a little wary of that. Kaisa should go to mid lane as well, not bot lane. So guys, I've gotten one kill when I got three men ganked top. I've sneaked one kill there. Other than that, I've been playing for side waves, jungle camps, turrets. And like I said, I will skill into an absolute monstrosity. Okay, there's three people on Herald, so that's good information there. Finally got rid of his passive. I want to do some damage check into a second into him. I can also just do damage by hitting the wave like this. Oh, I gotta hit him though. Oh, I got my passive back. So his ult was wasted. It's okay though, he wasted his ult. Just give me a second, I'm back to full HP. I'm gonna yoink that though. Yoink. Thank you, sir. Now we gotta wait for all this stuff to go away, and then we're gonna go back to full HP in a nanosecond. It's a bit harder to progress in this game because enemy team is extremely far ahead in their bot lane. But other than that, I'd much rather play into the Nafiri, because he can't really wave clear onto me. Hello. Oh. I can still fight back though, I'm not weak at all. My jump full HP. Okay, no, do I die, do I die, do I die, do I die, but please, no, 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 that's a full tank Mundo, by the way, just uh, in case you're wondering about my damage. Alright, come here, bitches. Get rid of that shit. Oh. Beautiful. Atlantis, she's dead. Beautiful, guys, what are you thinking? Eh? Full tank Mundo. Oh, not too shabby. Well, we have to wait for next wave to come. This guy will actually do damage now. I think I'm dead. Because I have no armor. Yeah, I am dead. That's a massive shot down to her. The Q actually landed. Yeah, I'm dead. <sighs> Shit. I didn't... I forgot about the Fury. I could have had that stir maybe Please if I went for it, but it's okay. Wait. It's crazy to me that I've still... Okay, this is so good that Kai'Sa dies. Because now I've... I, look, this guy has less AD than me. Although he has three AD items. I've built zero AD, right? This guy literally has less AD than I do. I want to get level 16 on the way first. Boom, you're dead. Yep. I literally have more AD than him with 3 AD items and I've built full tank. Tell me honestly, how do you feel about that? That's one turret gone. So do we go full tank for last item or do we build Warden's Blood Mill so we actually get AD damage, hey? I want you to get anything anyways. I have literally not built a single p point of AD here. How do you know you're gonna get level 60? Because I was very close. I looked at my XP before the skirmish. That guy's dead. Full tank Mundo, by the way. I have my passive again. I want my Arx to proke if I can. That got her flash, got Lux flash. Now time to back off. Oh, mama. Good W timing, though. If I have ult, I can fight back. Without ult, I'm dead. Meteor. Sona dying gives her a reset to kill me maybe as well. Yes. Okay, unlucky. I didn't have my landing despair. What do you think? We have a total of 4k bonus HP. So, if I build Warden's Blood right now, I get 2% bonus health as a tech damage additionally. 
and I have 4k bonus health, so that is 80 extra AD. I get 40 AD from the item, and I get 500 health with my E passive. I think we should build this. And then, we'll watch everything. I might have to TP top here, help my team out. Might be too fast though, they haven't committed yet. Still not a bad teleport. I mean, it's hard to get close here. Wait. Man. Beautiful. Pushing this, I will have Titanic Hydra. That's beautiful. Kaisa's chasing here for a kill, so I can one-shot this turret right here. Even without having any AD item. She's like, where the fuck is my turret? I know, bro. Goodbye. Away with you. That Q landed. Remember, guys, I'm full AD. Full tank, rather. And they are not weak at all. <laughs> These guys are very strong, by the way. It just didn't look like anything. <laughs> I didn't even lose HP. What the fuck is that, by the way? Uh, these four items combined feel pretty good. And this is what I mean, guys. Farm even, and you'll skill like a monster. That is so ridiculous. That's beyond stupid. Uh oh, that guy deals damage. Run. She has anti as well. Four items. Time to run. Leave me alone! Can I hit these wolves? No, I couldn't. I couldn't hit. Okay, why did I run back? Why did I run back? I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Who wants to fight? I could one shot the turret. I know that. I can do machine gun mundo tricks as well. Auto eat Titanic Hydra. Close. No! Hello. Healing juice. I can't even see my HP. That's how big it is. So, what does enemy team do? About me. I'm... Yeah, you are a problem late game. This is why you play Mundo. Now, this is, of course, optimized. But you see here, I had zero kills in my laning phase, right? Zero. All I did was farm even. I didn't even have a CS lead. Darius, I believe this matchup is actually pretty good for me. I have a lot of slows, which Darius dislikes. And he needs to play in two turns. But basically, he needs to E me first, get rid of my passive, and then E me again. But his E, I believe, has like a 22 second cooldown. So he needs 44 seconds in order to grab me. So this matchup is actually very good for me. I think fundamentals are extremely important, but you can only apply fundamentals once you have mastered your champion. So I think champion master is actually extremely important. So we're playing against um, the top Top three strongest top lane champions in the early game in the Darius. He's playing Ghost and D-Blade, right? Flesh goes D-Blade. He can try and zone me from the first three means worth of XP. So I gotta try and avoid that. Him allowing me to even land Qs here is just a giant blunder by him. But I don't really land them. I'm gonna land this one though. He's gonna dodge right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why he's decided to lose 200 HP before the wave even came, but that's his mistake. I want him to push me in because I never want to be forced to walk off for assets in a matchup like this. I wouldn't do unranked two masses on Yumi, by the way. My Grace is patting to top. Darius has priority, so one thing I gotta communicate very well with my jungler here is that if Darius does a third wave crash, he could invade my jungler. I'm never really scared of him right now because his first E I can just book with my passive. I'm gonna start turning out this wave a little bit, making it hard for him to get the crash. I get the ward here. He's popped the potion. Beautiful. We're farming even. Remember, guys, farming even is a win. It really is. I'm gonna wait with lessening this until these guys walk closer. There we go. Gonna get that. Might not get that from one auto. He got my passive. But I got Q auto E with the grass proc. So the next E he lands. I actually have to be careful, right? Uh, my passive is a pretty long cooldown, but so does his E. And that's why this matchup is so good for Mundo. Because his first E is basically always negligible. We're playing around gold and platinum memoir now. He has his E right now, I don't have my passive yet, so we gotta be a little bit mindful. But the wave is pushing it to me, so I'm not forced to walk up for last hits. I wanna keep the wave in the happy spot here. The wave is semi frozen here. He takes a turn shot. I think I can actually kill him. My passive is coming back as well. If he decides to recall, what I'm gonna do instead, guys, is slow push this wave. Hard push next wave, okay? And if I do that, I'm gonna cancel his base. I don't wanna allow him to base right now. A slow pushing into hard pushing, he is going to be forced to make a bad decision here. If he recalls right now, that is completely fine. If he stays, he is cooked. Okay, so his best decision would be to recall because the wave is slow pushing towards him right now. You always want to recall whilst the wave is pushing towards you. But if he stays right now, I'm gonna crash the wave into his turret and what happens after it crashes, it's gonna bounce into me. And so, so now that he stayed, he is in a world of trouble. Because right now, he is always going to have to reset at a bad timer. Because the wave is gonna be pushing away from him 
And if I reset TP back, I'll be able to catch him on the bounce. Right, he's half HP. So he has to collect this wave. He is forced to do so. But then afterwards here, you see his minions are kind of going to be a little bit stuck here. I will do this. And right now, you see this wave is going to start pushing back into me. And so the wave is pushing into me by default. And now Darius is forced to welcome Flacids. One benefit he has here is that this wave grants him level 6. So he might be able to use this level 6 as a bridge to get in this bounce. And that's why you'll see me thinning out this wave so I can match his level 6 timer. I don't want to push out the whole wave. I want to kind of keep him interested. He lost some XP so he didn't get a 6. And now the wave is pushing back into me. Darius still needs to get his reset. And this is what I meant. Darius can never find a good reset timer. He should have reset whilst I was pushing the wave towards him, because now he's going to lose a full cannon wave. Now you might be wondering, how much is a full cannon wave? Well, it's 200 gold, and then it's also all the XP. So it's practically the same as getting solo killed. Plus, by the time that this Mundo or this Darius is going to be back, the wave is going to be close under my turret, and so he's coming back to an awful wave state whilst having lost a full cannon wave. And this is all fundamentals. Reset timer. Darius missed the crucial reset timers, and this is all the result. So, the lesson we take from this is alert to start thinking out with your wave states, and you'll always be in a good spot. He's also full cannon wave, he's gonna lose most of this wave as well. And I said this in advance, right? I knew this was gonna happen, because he did not get a good reset opportunity. And all I did was play good with my reset timers. Right, after he took that one turret shot, I told him, or I said it, all he has to do is look for reset, if he doesn't, he is going to be cooked. Darius is moving. If he completes his move, what I'm gonna do is actually hard push this next wave to set up my own reset again. I always want to set up resets for myself. I'm setting on 600 gold again, so it's completely fine to look to set up a reset again. And yeah, that's how you get consistent in League of Legends chat. Setting up your reset timers permanently. Darius is making a roam here. My Jano dies. It sucks. He used Flash Ghost. Sure, he dies, but I got my reset here for free again, so I'm in a beautiful spot. True. Well, there goes my E. Well, there goes his E. Uh, I'm not sure if I can run away from this one. I get feared into my turret range, so we're fine. He has four stacks. Okay, it's massive that I live because Notion doesn't get any kills with his first ultimate. If you're a Notion player, you know how annoying that is to not get a kill on your first ultimate. Once you get Warmugus, it's GG. Hey! Okay, guys, we need to get 1.4k gold. I can always get one shield recall with my teleport, and my ultimate's coming back in 30 seconds, so I think we're fine here. But, you see here, my mindset is again always catered towards so how do I start my next reset? Alright, so it's probably gonna be with teleport. We just need to get 1.4k gold first. I Blows. I'm gonna stay now until I have 1.4k gold. Is he here? Uh oh. Yeah, your E doesn't do much, buddy. Two Qs for that's pretty good. You got a Q? Or am I gonna do a Gragas top to master in the future? I am not sure. I might. I'm not a big Gragas connoisseur. I'm dead here. No, we're chilling. My Q slows him too much. We need next wave. This is gonna grant us 200 gold because it's a cannon wave and then we'll have enough. I'm also gonna hit level 9, but he should hit level 8 from this wave. I think I could have maybe killed him. It's okay though, we don't have to. We're gonna get our Romox here. You plus one as well. Holy moly! And you guys are about to know, you guys know what's gonna happen, right? You guys know what happens when you get a solo kill Mundo. It's not gonna be nice. That guy is good. Yeah, buddy! Alright guys, we can get our warm oaks. Ooh, we don't have our boots yet. We are super close to our boots. I'm gonna be a greedy little piggy here. And make sure we get our boots as well. Uh oh, we need to land this. I think I'm fine. I have E, our passive rather. No, we are not fine. <laughs> okay, at least doesn't have a way. Wait, I had enough! I have- I get free boots, you idiot! You had enough! Hello, Dariusus. Hello! How did I miss? He flashed. Hello! Look how fast I am. Warmogs and boots. Oh, two kills. Three kills. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> he didn't expect my burst because I have Warmogs. He's like, hey! Why will no one shoot me? Because I have Warmogs. Where does that go? Run! I have Warmogs here and boots. I am monster fast. Hello! Hey! Mm! Oh! Beautiful. I this, this, this should not give me movement speed, but it does. But it does. So it's chill. Beautiful. Now we're in the game. Told you, three kills. It's been a while since we've done an unranked to master, eh? Oh, you're not killing me. You even missed. I mean, there's flesh, I guess. 
Gonna eat him in. I'm gonna start healing back to full though. Do they, do they know, chat? Do they know? Oh! 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 That was a pretty nice clean. Herb. I'm sorry to get better at it. Jesus, don't do damage, bro. I'm sorry, but you're just not him. I'm Shwundo. Get away from me. This setup is genuinely cracked though. Like, it's actually crazy. Well, well, well. Return, right? So I can get mid tier one. I can get mid tier two, perhaps. And then we're gonna go bot lane. Finding mandos don't matter anymore. It's all about macro. And now I would prefer to be bot, so I'm gonna ping these guys to go mid. Let me bot. Go mid. It's better for me to be bot to play for the bot tier one. Zeri goes mid. Renata goes mid. I can play for this and this. Enemy team might play for Herald would be a mistake, because I'm gonna destroy their whole base whilst they do so. Uh, Darius. Your turn is gone, buddy. Your people is gone as well. I hit it. That doesn't work. Okay, that does work. I need to get my passive, so I have it again. Yeah, macro around turrets and plates. But they're gonna try and stop me, so I can just I get kills like that. My team needs to go mid. Just let me side lane. If my team goes bot, they can all go bot as well. So that's why I need my team to go mid. So they don't all go bot as well. <gasps> you see my damage? <gasps> don't give a reset. Juju. And we get a turret. Hey, 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 my, my, my money, bitch. That's what I thought. Yeah, well, guys, you should never give a Mundo a solo kill. This is what happens. All right, Echo, you're gonna get machine guns. Dude, I couldn't even Titanic Hydra. I couldn't even Titanic Hydra. He would've got the machine gun, but yeah, he just had to auto E. Shit. There's not a machine gun, it's a burst rival. Shut up, man. We call it machine gun Mundo, deal with it. 420. For 21! Back to full HP. Smart build, I go Unending Despair, or do we go Giga Chat and go Overlord's Blood Mill? One for Overlord's Blood Mill, two for Bitch. I mean, I put it in a manner that everybody's gonna type one anyways, never mind, doesn't count. I think I'm gonna become a Mundo OTP after this, good luck. Look at this, this is fun as well. Oh, Darius! Oh, Darius! You're gonna get Machine Gunned, Auto E, Titanic Hydra. Nice damage. Goodbye. Oh, Hmm. That was the combo. Also eat that Titanic Hydra, baby. Hey, hey, hey. Guess my pizza toppings. Chicken? No, nobody takes chicken. What do you call it? It's like a... Uh, chorizo. Salami, salami. Salami. It's cheese and tomato sauce. <gasps> Bye. I enjoy your pizza, bro. Sadly, I can't eat that, so enjoy it, bro. Dude, I eat chicken on my pizza because I am allergic to cow and I don't eat pork, so I put chicken on my pizza. Sorry. Yes, there will be a set on rank to master. That's the champion I probably want to do next. Guys, I have 500 AD. Wait a second. I go from. Okay, yeah. So I have 500 AD, right? Building. I mean, I have some AD items, but mostly tanky. Pretty chill. Goat cheese and tomato sauce. That's goaded. No pun intended. Alright, I can machine gun him. Did I hit a turret? I'm not sure. I should have been dead. Do it. Come. Machine gun! Auto eat the turret! Yes! That's it! That's it! That's the combo! And he carries! <laughs> oh, bitch! Oh, that combo is so satisfying. I think there's not. A combo that gives you more dopamine. Auto-eat Titanic Hydra. Machine gun Mundo. GG! No.